In this video, we're going to be calculating a confidence interval for a population mean, and we're going to do it two ways. And the problem that we're given is going to be with the population standard deviation is unknown. All right, so uh, here's the problem. A data set includes 103 body temperatures of healthy adult humans, for which the sample mean of those 103 is 98.1 degrees Fahrenheit and the standard deviation is 0.56 degrees. Okay, so that's the sample standard deviation. We don't know the population standard deviation, but the end size, which is 103, is certainly greater than 30. So we're able to use the T distribution. Okay, so uh, the problem that we're faced with is find a 99% confidence interval for the population mean. Two ways. One, we're going to use the confidence interval formula and a table. Number two, we're going to use the calculator method. Okay, so what we know so far is that the sample mean is 98.1 and that's the point estimate for the population mean. Sigma is unknown and as I said before we don't know if the original population is near normal or not but the n equal to 103 being greater than 30 says that we can use the student t distribution anyway. Alright so method one we're going to draw a picture. I always should draw a picture. A picture of the 99% confidence interval is you have your bell-shaped curve here of sample means, not the original data, the sample means. And uh, there's 99% between these boundaries here. So that leaves 0.01 outside of those boundaries. So 0.01 is left over total in the two tails. So a t-score on one of the boundaries is the t-score for the alpha, which is the whole total, 0.01, uh, divided by 2. So it's the t for corresponding to 0 0.005. So we got to get that t-value to move forward. Okay, so we're going to go over to our table which is provided in the book and it's also online in the problem and looks like this t distribution critical t values and you have your degrees of freedom here okay so area in one tail is 0 0.005 that's this so that's the column we're in also area in two tails is 0 0.01 so either way this is the correct column to be in. All right, so uh, you're looking for n equals 103. Degrees of freedom is n minus 1 for this design for one mean. So 103 minus 1 is 102. And the closest degree of freedom to that in the table is 100. And in the column that we're in, that t-score is 2.626. Okay, so now we go here and we use our, our formula. First, get the error. The error is t times the sample standard deviation over the square root of the sample size. So t s over square root of n. There's our t value we just got out of the table. 0.56 is the sample standard deviation. Square root of 103 is the sample size. Divide that, carry it out to three decimal places because the problem that was online said to do it to three decimal places. So we're going to carry that accuracy. And then, just like any confidence interval, the design is the sample mean minus the error, comma, up to the sample mean plus the error. So we just go ahead with that formulation there. 
put in the numbers that we got and there is our 99% confidence interval for degrees Fahrenheit and you always write it out in words we are 99% confident the true population mean of healthy adult humans is between this degree Fahrenheit and this degree Fahrenheit. That's the way you finish off these problems. All right, so that's solved. Now we're going over to method two. Method two is a calculator method. All right, so you do stat menu and your screen looks like this. Uh, you arrow over to tests and go down to number eight T interval T interval and that looks like this and you'll have a choice of data or stats you choose stats you go over to here to stats choose that and that becomes black like that now you're getting ready to put in all the information that you will have so you're on the stats you put in a 98.1, which is a sample mean. The sample standard deviation is 0.56. The end size was 103. The confidence level that you want was 0.99. Arrow down to calculate, press enter, and you get this answer right here, which is exactly what we got by using the table. Okay, so that's all there is to do it. So we recommend and to do it be able to do these steps right here by hand so you know what's happening with the error be able to do that by hand and then be able to verify it by using the calculator so you show the work by hand for method one and then you verify it with method two